What's going on guys? Today we're talking about improving your strength off the floor in the deadlift, which is arguably one of the toughest parts of this movement. A lot of folks like to say that lockout is the toughest, but if we're not even getting off the floor, we can't even worry about the lockout. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a couple different ways I like to work with clients and athletes when it comes to improving their strength off the floor. I like to break it down from a more marginal to a more macro scale of different fixes, but let's dive into the three things I look at first when improving strength off the floor. So the first two aspects to explore are number one, are you rushing your setup? And number two, are you pulling the slack out of the bar? Both of these will somewhat bleed together, so that's why I'm roping them into one section. So rushing the setup entails having inconsistent mechanics when you are approaching and then initiating your pull. And this could be intra-set, it could be in between sets when it comes to set one, set two, set three. As fatigue set starts to set in, you'll generally notice this with the hips specifically because they will change their positioning throughout the set. So after that first rep, you'll notice that the hips start to rise a little bit usually when fatigue starts to kick in because we don't maintain our same hinge mechanics, our same eccentric loading. And then the second point is pulling the slack out of the bar. And we discussed this in our beginner video, so if you haven't checked that out, click on it up there in the top corner. But basically, this is the skill of producing force and tension between your body, the barbell, and the floor. It's the force that we're placing into the bar before we physically lift the weight, and it's essentially helping our nervous system create a sensory perception that weight is about to be lifted, we are holding on to something, and force is about to be generated. So it helps our body kind of conceptualize and understand that we are about to produce force and pull a weight from the ground. Both of these can influence strength off the floor. If neither of these are in check, then you can expect the hips to shoot up or you can expect to have some tension lost before your pull. The third aspect before we physically implement, implement variations is checking in with your bracing and your breathing. So we know bracing and breathing needs to be fluid throughout our training, and it's gonna be based off of what we're doing, how heavy we're going, the adaptations we're going for, and the likes. But with deadlifting, it's a bit easier to kind of conceptualize. Essentially, we are trying to resist the body from going into excessive flexion while we lift a weight against gravity. So it's a bit easier to understand how to brace in the deadlift. It doesn't need to be as fluid as something like a walking lunge, where we need to be much more mindful of our aerobic intake while producing force. So with our breathing patterns, how can that influence strength off the floor? We are not bracing and creating enough intra-abdominal pressure before initiating the pull. What can end up happening is the hips can rise. We can have that kind of slight tinge where the lumbar goes into flexion and we lose some of that tension throughout our torso and our hips, and then we'll end up seeing kind of that hip angle that shoots up too quickly and the back angle that starts to round mid-pull. And that's usually what people relate as a mid-pull problem, but it's oftentimes a problem with pulling off the floor and the strength off the floor. If we're having mechanical breakdown before we actually initiate that barbell due to tension loss in the intra-abdominal region, then we will more than likely see a more abbreviated version of this throughout the pull because our body will simply not be able to maintain the mechanics we're trying to produce. So the three things to check before you alter any movements or add variations to your training are number one, check out your setup. Video multiple sets and multiple reps. Is everything consistent? If not, or if there's a difference, then it might be worth investigating how you're sequencing your setup. So your stance, your hips, your torso, your grip. How are you sequencing them to be fluid when getting prepped to pull the weight? The second thing to look at is pulling the slack out of the bar. This is a skill that needs to be practiced, and as weight gets heavier, this skill becomes increasingly more important. The third thing is to look at your breathing and look at how you're bracing. Are you accommodating and creating enough intra-abdominal pressure for the task and external load at hand? All right, so you've checked those three boxes and you're still having trouble off the floor. There are a couple variations that I'll usually opt for. And the reason I always say, look at the first three things is because when we are implementing things like this and we're focusing on a very specific part of a movement pattern, we want to make marginal changes first. So look at the low hanging fruit and see if there's anything we can fix there. And if there's not, then we can adjust variations and programming as an athlete, it can be a bit tougher to do when you don't have a coach to help program that stuff in for you. So a couple variations that can be useful to plug in are number one, tempo deadlifts. So conventionally with tempo, we look at eccentric, bottom of the eccentric, concentric, 
and top of the concentric when we are riding in tempo and implementing it in different exercises. But specifically for this adaptation, we're only gonna focus on the concentric portion, so the lifting portion of the movement. Since the struggle is off the floor, implementing a two to three second slowdown in your concentric can be great for one, giving you a better idea of where you are through space and time when you are managing external loads, but number two, actually helping you focus on the strength needed and helping you scale back the weight a little bit to accommodate for where you might be falling short based on where you might be having any discrepancy in your form. So implementing tempo deadlifts in reality will look like adding a slight increase to your concentric movement pattern. And you can even add a pause right off the floor if you're really focused on maintaining your hip and torso integrity when managing load. So adding a two to three second tempo to your concentric can be a really useful tool. And I would advise scaling back your intensity, AKA your load by about 10 to 20% based on your experience level and how many reps you're doing, but that's gonna have to ebb and flow based on your program. And then also you can add a pause off the floor. So adding a one second pause about six inches to a foot off the floor can be another really useful tool for strengthening your awareness of where your hips, torso, and the load are in space and time. All right, so I always opt for tempo first because I think it's a bit easier to conceptualize and implement, but if tempo is falling short, another tool you can use is a banded deadlift. Now, if you don't have a banded platform, you could put the band under your feet and wrap it around your hands and pull it so. So that band is gonna be strongest through that mid rep range. So you are gonna start to get some of that tension right as you get off the floor for about like a foot off the floor. I would recommend using a lighter band. A thicker band can generally be a bit tougher to scale when it comes to how much load is actually being produced with the band, plus the external load on your bar. Plus if you are just a red intermediate lifter, definitely opt for a lighter band. Focus on what needs to be done, AKA strength off the floor, and don't use it as so much as like an ego tool. The third thing we can do to improve strength off the floor, and this one is relatively simple, is to reset every rep. When we are deadlifting, especially with heavier loads and our body starts to get fatigued, take a mesocycle or even just a couple weeks or deadlift sessions to reset after every single rep. This is gonna help you be one, more aware of the first three things we talked about in this video, but number two, also help you be more in tuned with how you are positioning yourself throughout your sets. Is there discrepancy towards the end of the set? If so, there's probably some fatigue related mechanism at play. So let's investigate even further where that fatigue might be kicking in that's causing us to have some discrepancy in our starting mechanics. All right guys, that wraps up this video on improving your strength off the floor. Before we implement any major change, always check out these smaller things that we can improve on. If those are all in check, then we can start implementing more variations. If you have any questions on this topic, drop them in the comments below. And as always, drop a like to the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.